You are listening to the Foundry Church Podcast. If you'd like to know more about us, visit www.foundrychurch.net. Friends, welcome again to the Foundry Church. What a morning we're having here, celebrating God's faithfulness and calling so many to himself to make their profession of faith. And today we're going to attend one last time to our Christmas theme, to the, the Christmas series, the Euangelion, the good news, and realize that one more time, After the birth of Christ, the angel came and spoke, and he spoke an important word. He spoke a word of escape to Joseph, which I think is interesting. I don't know about you. I know for me, a number of times in my young years, especially my teen years, there were a few, we'll call them close calls that I had as a young man messing around, doing things I know I probably shouldn't have been doing. I remember one time we were coming back into the United States from Tijuana, Mexico, where I... um, had gone with some friends and we were just being doorknobs and um, and we didn't get in a ton of trouble or anything, but I'll be honest, I felt like I escaped Mexico that day. I didn't want to get in trouble. And so we hustled, we hightailed it out of old Mexico and into San Diego. And, um, you know, hopefully my mom's not watching this and finding out for the first time. But you have these situations in life where you escape and you feel like you get by just by the skin of your teeth right? Today we're going to talk about a story like that. We're going to talk out of Matthew chapter 2 when Joseph is dreaming. I love when scripture echoes. You know this. It's one of my things. I love when scripture echoes and this is a big echo. Once again, Joseph is dreaming. An angel is coming to him and we find in Matthew chapter 2 verses 11 to 23, we find these words. When they had gone, An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. This was not a, hey, once you wake up after sleeping in, get to it. This is a get up now and escape. The angel uses the word escape, which I find amazing. Stay there in Egypt until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, Joseph did, took the child and his mother during the night, and they left for Egypt, where they stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, remember the Magi went back to um, their land by a secret route and didn't tell Herod where the baby was. Herod was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and in its vicinity who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah. Weeping and great mourning, Rachel, weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. I just love this. I love all the echoes. And he said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. When he heard that Archelaus was uh, reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophet, that he, Jesus, would be called a Nazarene. So today we're going to talk, just for a minute, the angel's message. I want to look at it again. The angel's message of good news is salvation, right? We go back to this. The angel's news is one of salvation to Joseph. Get up now and in the dead of night, take off, escape to Egypt. He's saving the child's life. But but we know that the angel's message has been bigger than that throughout the whole of this story. It's been a message of truly good news, euangelion. And the angel, the angelos, hidden within that good news is the messenger. And the message was, is, and will always be salvation. That God was doing something to not only fulfill the justice required because of sin, but also the fullness of mercy that God wanted in his heart of hearts. And we see that this comes to pass in the angel's message. We also recognize that Mary and the shepherds have this unique, well, connection. See, for Mary, she carried forward into this world the physical son of God. She, in her obedience, carried Christ forward into the world. But so did the shepherds. 
The shepherds carried the word, the good news, the euangelion. They believed and they went and told others. They went and told other people. And that word is for us all. We are to believe and tell others, to engage in the gospel work of sharing the good news near and far and bearing the Son of God forward in this world. But don't ever forget this as a Christian. This world is sinful, it is broken, and God always gives us an out. He always provides for you and I a path of escape. I want you to think with me on how through this series we've talked about the many parts of the good news. But part of the good news that Jesus Christ came to save us from our sins, that his life, death, and resurrection, when we believe, offers us a free new life, a new life in Christ, but also the Holy Spirit of God comes into our life. And just as Mary physically bore the Son of God into the world, God physically fills our being with the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, is put, like Jesus was put into a mere human, the Spirit of God is put back into mere humans. And we take forward this gospel message knowing that it is the only hope of salvation. We hold on to it and we carry it forward into the world. But we need to remember there is one who seeks to destroy the Son of God in this world. There is one who hates the message of Jesus. There is one who stands over and against God and in his arrogance seeks to defy and dethrone the high king of heaven. Satan, the devil, hates Jesus. And he looks for ways to destroy the son of God. First, when he was a little boy, to end the child's life. But I think furthermore, it gets different. Remember how Herod, it said in the text, he sought to destroy the child's life. He killed every boy under two in an entire town. I mean, just take a minute. Look at our church. So full of little boys, little kids. Can you imagine? Like that's how much Satan hates Jesus Christ. It's a horrible thing how much he opposes the Son of God. And I love that God gives an escape. God gives an escape For those who bear the Son of God. Mary and Joseph were told to flee and keep the child safe. Here's where I want to go with this. And I think it's really important that right here on the hinge of the old year tipping into the new, that we ask this question. Are there things in your life that are seeking to destroy your witness and the life of the Son of God in you? Are there things in your life that are seeking to destroy the witness and the life of the Son of God in you, in me? Are there things actively at work in our lives? Because here's why. The message to Joseph applies to you, it applies to me. Run. Run like there's a bear chasing you. Run like there's really nothing else to do but get away. Flee from sin and anything that seeks to destroy the witness of Christ in your life. Do not pretend or fool yourself to think that you are somehow strong enough. You can stay and fight and be powerful enough to oppose the enemy. I will tell you this, that kind of pride comes right before a fall. I am not strong enough. I run from temptation. I run like a clown with a machete is chasing me. I run from temptation. We have to run from it all the time. Anything that seeks to destroy the witness of God and the Spirit of God in your life, the Son of God being brought to bear on this world, anything that tries to destroy your witness and the life of the Son of God in you, flee from it. Run from it. Be like Joseph. There are times where we escape where we obey God and run from those things that seek to ruin the witness of Christ. So I just want to take a minute as we close this year and remind you that you carry the most amazing gift and Christmas treasure with you into the end of 18 and beginning of 19. You carry the Son of God with you. And your charge is to protect and guard that witness, to protect Him and His reputation 
How painful is it when we see on the news pastors and different Christians doing horrible things? And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, we get, I, we're sorry, but we have to protect the witness. We have to protect what God loves, his son. We, like Joseph, have to flee. So here's the thing I want to do. I just want to name some stuff. Protect the son of God and your witness to his life in you when you go back into life after the holidays and you see that coworker that maybe you're a little too close with. Maybe there's a little too much of an attachment there and you need to put up some boundaries and kind of escape from an emotional connection that's unhealthy and could ruin the witness of God in your life, in their life, in the company you work for. Maybe you need to flee from the chronic game of comparison from comparing yourself to others, from judging other people and celebrating people's downfall rather than celebrating when the Son of God comes through their life in beautiful ways. Maybe you need to stop and flee from the comparison game because comparison games only end up dividing. Nobody ever, ever comes out more unified when you sit and play the comparison game because life isn't fair. We weren't called to be fair. We were called to be faithful. So if you compare yourself to other people, you will find yourself justifying sin to be better than them, to take the next step up, or you'll just be very angry and bitter at what you don't have. Maybe it's time to flee from that. One of the other things we can flee from, flee from is the small lies, the little things. The book of the Song of Solomon, it's actually a very intimate book. It's um, a very intimate kind of marital book, actually. But there's this one line that I love. It says, catch us the foxes, the little foxes that eat the buds before their time. Here's what would happen. The little foxes go and they get the, the little buds where the grapes would come into the, in the vineyard. The grapes would blossom. And from the little blossoms come a cluster of grapes. But the foxes would come in and get the little bud. And that little bud had a tiny bit of sweet nectar in it. And they would eat that and it would take away a whole cluster of grapes. And by doing that, it ruined the whole harvest. The little things. The little things. Maybe it's time to run from the little lies from the little nuanced half-truths, from the little things you do in secret, from the little thoughts, from the little indulgences that you don't want anybody else to know about, from the little books you read that aren't right, from the little things you see. Flee. Run away. Just pack up and run. Run from the little lies, the little things. Don't indulge the things that seek to betray the witness of Christ, the living Son of God in you. And finally, I'm going to just be super blunt. Tomorrow night's New Year's Eve. If you usually get blitzed on New Year's Eve and you go out and do stuff on New Year's Eve that you normally wouldn't, run from it. Run from it. Be people who are brave enough to know when you just run. Don't go out and get tanked tomorrow night. Go out, have fun, and celebrate God's goodness in 2018 and celebrate God's promise into 2019. But flee from the excess of alcohol and food and probably very unhealthy behaviors that go with it. I would encourage you very strongly for those who are in the room who just became brand new Christians, let them see in you a living witness of someone who guards the life of the Son of God in their very being. My friends, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. What a holiday season it has been. It has been filled indeed with good news. Lord Jesus Christ, we, your church, just give you thanks. And we ask, come, Lord Jesus, and help us to protect that which you love, your Son. May we flee from evil even as it pursues us. And we ask, God, would you always make clear to us our way out, our path away from temptation and sin. You are our Lord. And we ask that you would show us what we must do in order to faithfully bear the Son of God into this world. Thank you for 2018. And we pray your grace and peace over us as we step into 2019. Your church is thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to the Foundry Church Podcast. If you'd like to know more about us, visit www.foundrychurch.net.